Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the uh, best measures for the center of a distribution and for the spread of a distribution. And this is all part of describing a distribution as a whole. So we have two measures for the center. We have the median and the mean. The median is the middle data value, which means that half of the data values are below the median and half of them are above the median. The mean is the average, uh, when we add them all up and divide by how many there are. And the mean is um, it's the point where the histogram is balanced. Now, depending on the shape of our distribution, sometimes we want to use the median to describe the center, and sometimes we want to use the mean. Before we talk about that, we want to talk about what it means for a statistic, that would be a mean or a median, to be resistant. And that means that it's resistant to um, extreme values, uh, either large or small. So um, the mean is resistant, whereas the mean, sorry, the median is resistant, whereas the mean is not. So to show this, let's look at the example below. It says five families have annual incomes of 25,000, 31,000, 34,000, 44,000, and 56,000. Now imagine that one family whose income was 25,000 wins a million dollar lottery and increases their income to 1,025,000. Um, before the, so this is before the lottery win, when you calculated the mean, we got 38,000 and the median was 34,000. But when after the lottery, so basically um, replacing that 25,000 um, income with 1,025,000, it increased the mean substantially, whereas it only increased the median a little bit. So um, this is showing that the mean was greatly affected by this extreme value of $1,025,000, whereas the median was far less um, affected. So we say that the median is resistant to these extreme values. So this is important when we talk about um, the best measure depending on the shape of a distribution. So in this first graph, we have a symmetric distribution. And when um, a distribution is symmetric, and in this case, it's perfectly symmetric, um, the mean and the median are the same value. And we like to use the mean to describe the center when a distribution looks like this. But when a distribution is skewed, so for example, this middle one, we have a distribution that's skewed to the right. This right tail skew is going to pull the mean towards the right, making the mean value bigger than the median value. But that mean is being affected by the skew, whereas the median is not. The same thing happens when it's skewed to the left, except for now the mean is being pulled to the left. And again, the median is not really being affected. Um, so when a distribution is skewed to the right or to the left, we use the median to describe the center because the median is not affected by those extreme values. This would also be the case if we had outliers. Uh, outliers are also extreme values, and so therefore we would use the median to describe a distribution that contained outliers. When we talk about the spread of a distribution, we have three measures that we look at. We look at the range, the um, interquartile range, and the standard deviation. The spread of um, a distribution talks about how spread out the data is. Is the data all um, clustered around the center, or is it much more spread out than that? Uh, the first measure, range, is just really the difference between the minimum and the maximum data values. Uh, this is um, a measure that is not resistant. So any outliers is going, are going to affect the range dramatically. Um, 
for the most part in this class, we never use the range as a best measure for the spread of a distribution. It's, it's just too, um, it's too simple. Um, to talk about the interquartile range, we have to talk about um, quartiles or percentiles. So let me do a little bit of uh, vocabulary first. So when we talk about percentiles, um, a percentile is uh, the percentage of data values below that value. So uh, for example, my two-year-old is in the 40, or sorry, the 97th percentile for height, meaning she is taller than 97% of other two-year-olds. She's very tall. Um, so to bring this into the interquartile range, that means that when we look at the median, since 50% of the data values are below the median, we say that the 50, 50th percentile is the median. Now, if we wanna look at the 25th percentile, we call that the first quartile, or Q1. And the 75th percentile is called the third quartile, or Q3. The interquartile range is the distance between Q1 and Q3. So basically the interquartile range, or we say IQR, is the middle 50% of the data, the distance between Q1 and Q3, or Q3 minus Q1. Now this interquartile range is going to be resistant to extreme values. So if we have outliers out here, there or even down here, it's not going to affect calculating the distance between um, the Q1 and Q3. So for that reason, when we have a distribution that is skewed or has outliers, we want to use a measure that is not affected by these. So we use the IQR to describe the spread of the distribution. One more, um, and we need to introduce the idea of variance before we can get to standard deviation. So the variance is a measure for how spread out the data is from the mean. Um, so, uh, and you won't have to use this formula, but I do want to explain it just a little bit. So um, this y value, these are the data values. Anything with a bar above it is the mean. So they're taking every data value and subtracting the mean. They're squaring it. They're summing all of those values and then dividing by n minus 1. So they're taking the average of the distance squared from each data value to the mean. Um, why do they square it? They square it because they don't want a data value that's below the mean to um, kind of undo the calculation with a data value that's above the mean. Right? If we add a negative number to a positive number, they zero out. So by squaring these, they're making everything a positive value. Now, why do they divide by n minus 1? This is kind of a big topic and way beyond our class. Um, but basically, instead of dividing by the, the number of data values, they divided by the number of data values minus 1 um, because the, uh, it's been shown that the uh, population uh, variance is different than the sample variance when they divide by n. So they have a big mathematical calculation for why n minus 1 works instead. Um, the standard deviation is basically the square root of this, um, of the variance, that calculation. So um, the standard deviation is giving us a number that's close to the average distances from the, that the data values are from the mean. Um, because of this, the way this calculation works, the standard deviation is not resistant to outliers because those outliers are going to be included in this calculation. Therefore, we only use the standard deviation to describe the spread of a distribution when that distribution is symmetric. 
All right, let's look at an example. Um, so here we have a histogram to the right shows the percent change in the prison population in 21 states between 2010 and 2015. So part A asks us to describe the histogram's shape. So remember to describe the shape, we're gonna talk about skew versus symmetry, modes, and outliers. So for this um, distribution, we have a tail here. So we would say that this is skewed to the left. It's unimodal. And it looks like there could be a possible outlier um, down in this uh, first bin, but we're, we don't really know for sure. So we could say that there's um, a possible outlier, um, possible outlier to the left. So part B now asks, based on this shape, would you expect the mean or the median to be higher? Well, since this distribution is skewed to the left, that would mean that the median is being, or sorry, the mean is being pulled to the left. The median is not going to be affected by the skew, which means that the mean being pulled to the left is being pulled to the smaller values, giving, giving um, the median to be higher. Can you tell it's 1 a.m. while I'm making this video? I'm like tripping over my words here. All right, part C. Um, what would be the most appropriate measure for the center and the spread of this distribution? Um, so in this last video, we talked about the center and the spread. When a distribution is symmetric, we use the mean for the center and the standard deviation for the spread. But when a distribution is skewed or has outliers, we use the median for the center and the IQR for the spread. So in this case, for the center, we would use the median and for the spread we would use the IQR. Uh, why? We would say um, since the distribution is skewed left. Um, part D and E ask us to discuss um, just kind of reading this histogram. So it says, how many states saw a decrease in their prison population? Um, so keep in mind that right-hand rule. So um, right here, this, this bin right here is going to be from 0 to, it looks like, 2.5. Um, so anything with these positive percent changes means it's going to increase the prison population. The negative percent uh, or a decrease in the population will go with these bins here. So it looks like we've got um, a decrease in the population in the states in this bin, this bin, and this bin. And they all have size one in them. There's one here one here and one here. So we would say that there, it looks like there's three states that saw a decrease in the prison population. And it asks for the percent of states that saw an increase of 5% or higher in their prison population. So 5% or higher is gonna be these two bins here. And to calculate the percent, we need the total number of states that they looked at. So they looked at 21 states, and um, it looks like from 5 to 7.5, there were four states, and from 7.5 to 10, there were two states. So we would say that six out of the 21 states uh, saw an increase of 5% higher. And when we put this in our calculator and calculate a percent, we get um, 28 point six percent. 
So, so far I haven't shown you how to calculate the mean, the median, the standard, like we've discussed it. Um, but that's because I don't want you to make those calculations by hand. You're going to find these statistics for the center and the spread using your calculator. And there is um, one command in your calculator that will give you all of these statistics. It's called uh, one variable statistics. So I have those steps over here. The first step is to enter all your data into L1. Then we're going to go to the stat button and go over to calc. And in that menu, we're going to choose one variable stats. And we're going to make sure that L1 is in our list. And that will give us an output. Um, X bar in the output is the mean of our um, data. Then they, the calculator will give us a sample standard deviation and a population standard deviation. It will then also give us what's called the five number summary. The five number summary is the minimum, Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum. And then remember that the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So I have a video of my calculator doing that. So you can see that I go to stat, edit, and I have the data in L1. If you go to second and quit so that we can go back to stat and arrow over to calc and you can see one variable stats, you hit enter, L1 should be in your list. There is no frequency list, so leave that empty and hit calculate. And now you can see we have all of our statistics here. And we're going to use these on the next example on the next page. So looking at this example, it says, students in a biology class kept record of the height. We used this one before. So we have um, the height of all these plants. And the first problem asks us to find the mean, standard deviation, median, and IQR. So um, you just watched my calculator do that in the last uh, slide, but let's watch it again. So again, we're going to put all the data into L1. Once the data is in L1, we're going to go quit out of that and go to stat, then calc, and then one variable statistics. L1 should be in the list, no frequency, and hit calculate. And I want to stop it right here so we can look at this output. So X bar is our mean. So that's going to be 51. The, uh, the median, I can't see that yet. I got to scroll down for that. We have a sample standard deviation. That's SX. And sigma X is the population standard deviation. Now, this was a sample of plants taken in a class. So we're going to use um, we're going to use that SX, which is ten point six four. Um, to find the median and the IQR, we have to scroll down a little bit. So I'm going to play the video a little bit further here. So I scroll down. Um, so the median it shows us is fifty point five. And the IQR, remember, is Q3 minus Q1, which is going to be 57.5 minus 43.5. And that is going to be what? Um, six. OK. Now it says, look at a histogram of the data using your graphing calculator and describe the distribution. So I'm going to take this further. Remember to look at a histogram. We go to Zoom 9. I already set this up from a previous video. So there's our histogram. Let's describe this distribution. So we're going to first start with a shape. So with the shape, we would say that this looks like it's skewed to the right. 
Unimodal. Um, and I don't know that there's any um, outliers. I do remember um, our stem and leaf plot and seeing that 75 was was our um, our like highest value, but I don't know that there's any outlier. So we'll just say um, doesn't seem to show any outliers. All right, remember that part of describing a distribution also means that you give the best measure for the center and the spread. So for the center, because this distribution is skewed to the right, we're going to use the median. And we've calculated that. It's 50.5 uh, centimeters. And the spread, again, because it's skewed to the right, we're going to use the IQR which is six centimeters.